So here's an alternative way of creating a bootable Lion disk image or ISO uh, which you would have created from let's say if you downloaded Lion Goldmaster 11A511 so this is the file that I obtained from Apple uh, which I used to generate a bootable Lion.ISO now if you just do a simple procedure of uh, converting this image to the ISO it will not be bootable uh, because there's several steps that needed are needed to be taken before it's uh, made bootable on VMware and probably on other systems too so here's the steps that I had followed uh, essentially they're not that different from Dinesh's method which is on this website here and uh, so the first step you want to do is go to disk utility fire that up and what you want to do is create a new image called lion.dmg so to do that click on file new blank image and then give it a name let's say I want to save it under lion1 and also the disk image name will also be let's say lion1 or whatever else you want to call it lion let's just call it lion goldmaster now here you would want to make it 5 gigabytes so it's going to be very similar to the procedure followed by Dinesh a 5 gigabytes hard drive so click OK uh, change this to macOS extended and then leave the rest of these uh, steps as they are notice you want the image to be readable and writable you want to be able to modify it so here you'll hit create and uh, this will probably take a little bit of time so I'm just gonna leave it running but essentially I'll just uh, walk you through some of the steps notice that I've already done this and I've created uh, my images but uh, for the sake of clarity I will do the same steps for you guys in the meantime while that is happening uh, what you want to do is brush up on some of your terminal commands so let's say uh, if you don't want to start typing out a lot of these uh, terminal commands of let's say open base system.dmg what you could do is uh, make all the hidden files uh, viewable in terminal and the command to do that uh, where are we sorry let me just bring up my history of all of my stuff that I've done in terminal okay right so here's the command I'll just bring it uh, front and center okay sorry flash and uh, screencast-o-matic is messing around with my system here but basically this is the command you want to type out it'll be defaults right com.apple.finder apple show all files and then true after you've typed that out what you want to do is hit oops you want to hit kill all finder which will basically reset or restart finder and you'll be able to view all the hidden files and folders if you want to undo that command uh, just press up in terminal and then change this to false hit enter and then do kill all finder it will reset everything back to normal anyway so that's the steps to show hidden files if you're not too uh, terminal savvy and don't want to follow a lot of the steps that Dinesh had listed in terminal okay so let's see here um, we've created a new DMG file come on it's a little slow because I'm actually uh, uh, using Screencast-O-Matic, which is draining my system using Flash. Okay, so line one was the disk image that I have just generated, and line GM is the file that I had saved or the mountable file inside that DMG. Fine. Okay, so now what you want to do is load up your line GM. So you want to mount this image okay and notice that 
it is now showing a lot of hidden files like all of these almost transparent files are not viewable if you don't have hidden files activated this is the file that you are asked to activate right there open base system.dmg once you have hidden files shown you can just double click that and it'll activate it on its own here through uh, the finder so it'll pop up right here as the next uh, DMG or actually at the bottom here it'll be base system.dmg and then it'll have something like this package here <coughs> In any case, I'm just following the steps outlined here, almost identically, but I'm going to be dumping all of the files instead of a separate line installer uh, hard drive. I'll be dumping them into a newly generated 5 gigabytes worth of line GM. So notice it's 5 gigabytes, right? So essentially, once that system is loaded, you'll hit restore and you'll hit line GM as your destination. So as soon as the base system is opened up pr properly, I'll demonstrate this, uh, the steps, but it'll be identical to what you have to do here. Okay, now you don't want to forget any of these steps because uh, as soon as you'll be uh, restoring, all of the files have to be generated anew, like the kernel cache has to be injected into the new line GM system or the folder and you'll have to modify the com apple boot plist so these two lines will have to be added to the uh, com.boot uh, dot apple dot boot dot plist so you will have to make the, sure that this looks identical next this step uh, you don't have to do in terminal anymore and you don't even have to use the sudo command which is super user do procedure you just do uh, these simple steps but notice it will not be line installer anymore it will be uh, the same name Mac OS X install ESD but it will be inside the lion onedmg okay so hope you're still with me but essentially I will show how to do these steps in uh, in finder instead of terminal alright so it looks like we're pretty much done the new base system will appear here so there we go Mac OS X base system now what you want to do is hit restore now line GM will be the new destination okay that's good hit restore and let it run for a little while you will type out your password and let this thing run for a little bit it should, shouldn't take more than uh, about five minutes or so depending on the speed of your VM how many cores you uh, given it and how much RAM you've given it. So I'll just let that run and you can see for yourselves uh, the procedure live and I'll just continue yabbering uh, about the steps that need to be taken. So the only step that you might want to consider doing in terminal is just typing out this command here after you're in the correct folder. Now in order to be in the correct folder you would have to be uh, navigating not to the line installer but you'll be navigating to the Mac OS X base system inside your lion onedmg so I'll just show it to you as soon as this thing is finished so uh, for uh, to save a little bit of time I'm gonna be pausing my screencast right now okay so it looks like the procedure took uh, just around four minutes or so and uh, what you can do now is actually close this utility we're done here so I'm just gonna quit it the f the topmost Mac OS X base system that just popped up is the one that is was just generated or restored to so what I will do here is just show it on the right hand side and the original one will be on the left hand side okay so let's just quickly follow the steps notice that they are different and it is basically because the restore is not identical and um, so the steps that you need to take are first of all copy down uh, where are we kernel kernel there it is 
I'm gonna grab this, drag it, paste it here. It's 24 megabytes, and this is an important file. Okay. What's the next step? Uh, sorry, one more time. Bl right. So instead of copying it into Lion Installer, you just copy it directly into Mac OS X base system. So notice it's right there and it's hidden. But because I have uh, show hidden files, you can actually see all my hidden files. Next, we want to modify com.apple.bootplist, uh, com which is under uh, library. So we'll go to library. Then we will go to preferences, system configuration, and here's the file. Okay, notice that it's missing a couple of things and I already had it open previously. I'll just copy these couple of strings and I will paste them. Uh, sorry, my screencast-o-matic. You want to unlock it. Okay, there we go. Save and quit text edit. So here we go. If I press space, this is the correct information now. So it'll be using the kernel cache uh, appropriately. Okay, what's the next step we need to do? We modified the uh, plist file. Now we want to copy the packages files. So to do that, you will just navigate to the system, installation, and simply delete this, command backspace, and then <coughs> go back here. This is the Mac OS X install ESD where you got the kernel cache. And just the click on the packages, drag and drop into the installation folder on the new destination DMG. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. I'll uh, pause it again and we'll come back in a second. Okay, so we're done copying packages from the original Mac OS X install ESD to the new installation folder insti inside the lion.dmg uh, folder. Okay, we can close that. So this is now where we copied it to. Next, uh, what else do we have to do? Right, you want to do touch server plist dot uh, server version dot plist. Just copy that. Go to terminal. Uh, you want to cg into volumes, and it will actually be uh, Mac OS X install base system one. Uh, so we'll cd into Mac OS X base system and then space one. Uh, right. Okay. And then here you would want to navigate to system library core services. Okay, so first thing to note is that this folder does not have a server version.plist. So what you will do is just type in touch server plist and check that it's there. And there it is. I've just created it under system library core services and there's the zero kilobyte file so it's just an empty file that is a flag for uh, VMware to to determine whether this is a legitimate server copy of OS 10 of course it's not but we are fooling it great so uh, this is pretty much the last step that we had to do to follow the procedure here and one final step to generate the ISO from this DMG file what you will want to do is unmount all of these disks so we'll just unmount all of them and then <coughs> uh, right I'm still in it so